Hello students, Namaste. I am starting the chapter oscillations. Let us first understand the terms included in this chapter. First, what is oscillation? Oscillation is any type of to and fro motion about a fixed point. There will be a body moving about a point which is also called as equilibrium point. And this is called equilibrium point because the total force acting on the body at this point will be zero. Next is what is simple harmonic motion. A simple harmonic motion is a type of oscillatory motion in which acceleration of the body is directly proportional to magnitude of the displacement and acceleration is also always directed towards the mean position or which is also called as equilibrium position. In other words, I can write this equation as F is directly proportional to displacement. If acceleration is proportional to displacement, it means that force is also proportional to displacement. Or I can write force is equal to mass times acceleration that is proportional to minus displacement. I can write this as MA is equal to by removing the proportionality ma is equal to some constant k times x and this can be further written as mass into since acceleration is second derivative of position i can write this as t squared x by dt squared that is equal to minus kx if i bring the right hand side that is minus kx to the left hand side it becomes m into d squared x divided by dt squared plus kx is equal to 0. I can divide the whole equation by m. So this turns out to be d squared x by dt squared plus k by m into x is equal to 0. This equation represents an equation for simple harmonic motion and I can also write this in the form of d squared x divided by dt squared plus omega squared into x equal to 0 where omega squared is equal to k by m. The solution for the second order differential equation is given by x is equal to some constant a into sine of omega t plus constant phi. This equation satisfies the second order differential equation d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to 0. In this equation s is equal to a sine omega t plus phi. This term a is called as amplitude that is the maximum displacement from the main position and the term omega is called as angular frequency or also called as angular velocity this term phi is the phase constant phase constant its value is determined by initial conditions for that oscillation. If t is the distance between two extreme points of an oscillator, then it is related to amplitude as a is equal to d by 2. The term omega in this equation is equal to square root of k by m and by definition omega is equal to 2 pi by t that is angular displacement 2 pi divided by time period of the oscillation t x is equal to a sin omega t plus phi let me drop that constant term phi let me take it as 0 so a sin omega t now this is a general equation for displacement of it. then what is the general equation for velocity of the body performing simple harmonic motion we know that velocity v is equal to time derivative of position so it is dx by dt and 
that can be written as d by dt of a sin omega t we have the position function a sin omega t therefore it becomes a is a constant take it outside the derivative of sin is cosine so cos omega t and derivative of the phase term is omega so you can write this as a omega cos omega t this is equation for velocity at any time t now from the trigonometric identity cos squared theta plus sin squared theta is equal to 1 i can write v is equal to a omega into square root of 1 minus sin squared omega t so let me multiply this a into the square root so it becomes omega into square root of a squared minus a squared sin squared omega t this a squared sin squared omega t is nothing but square of the displacement term so it is a squared minus x squared if we know amplitude and displacement of the body its velocity is related by this equation if you know time and amplitude then we can make use of this equation we know that acceleration is equal to time derivative of velocity so it can be written as dv by dt that is a is equal to d by dt of v is given by here we know that v is a omega cos omega t therefore that is equal to a omega derivative of cos omega t that is equal to minus a omega sin omega t into omega that is minus a omega squared sin omega t but remember a sin omega t is displacement so i can write this equation as omega squared into x is equal to a now if i multiply m on both the sides this will give me m a is equal to minus m omega squared x or force f is equal to minus m omega squared x this means force is proportional to x as m and omega are constants and it is negative of x that means force is maximum f is maximum at displacement x is equal to amplitude and f max is equal to minus m omega squared a similarly force is zero at x is equal to zero that is mean position f minimum is equal to zero as displacement is zero now we can understand the phase relationship between velocity position and acceleration since this function velocity is a omega cos omega t a omega cos can be written as sin omega t plus 90 degrees that is pi by 2 radians sin pi by 2 plus omega t is cos omega t since position itself is given in sin function the velocity and position or the displacement are having a phase difference of 90 degrees or we can also say that velocity leads the displacement by 90 degrees now let us find out the relationship between acceleration and displacement we know that a is equal to minus omega squared x is a sin omega t that means it is reflection of displacement you can write this as omega squared a sin omega t plus pi so displacement 
and acceleration are having a phase difference of pi radians. The phase difference between displacement and acceleration is pi radians or you can say it as 180 degrees. Similarly, the phase difference between velocity and position is 90 degrees that is half of phase difference between position and acceleration then from these two we can say that phase difference between velocity and acceleration is also 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians and this is true only in the case of frictionless forces if there is any dissipative force phase relationship between these quantities will change now if i plot all these functions that is position velocity and acceleration as a function of time they are sinusoidal in nature now let us find out how a plot of velocity versus position look like we know that velocity v is equal to omega into square root of a squared minus x squared let me square this on both sides so it becomes v squared equals omega squared into a squared minus x squared so it becomes v squared by omega squared is equal to a squared minus x squared or further you can write this as v squared by omega squared plus x squared is equal to a squared now let me divide throughout by a squared so that will give me v squared by a squared omega squared plus x squared divided by a squared is equal to 1. This is an equation of ellipse. Therefore, a plot of velocity versus position will look like an ellipse. If I plot velocity as a function of position, the graph will look like an ellipse. Now let us see how a plot of acceleration versus displacement look like which is a is equal to minus omega squared x so a is related to x as a linear function this equation corresponds to a straight line equation with intercept 0 and slope being minus omega squared x so this is a straight line passing through the origin with the negative slope and if i plot that i will obtain a plot with negative slope a straight line with a negative slope it should pass through the origin the slope of this curve will be equal to minus omega squared and intercept is zero as it is passing through the origin 